I, and I, I honestly don't believe like I'm the only one in this position. Like, what the heck is the metaverse? Oh boy, how much time do we have, Emily? So <laughs> <laughs> probably not enough. Um, so um, you know, I want you to think of this uh, situation. Um, you probably have already seen the clip of it somewhere. Uh, it makes its rounds on social media every few years, but it's this um, video clip of Bill Gates talking about the future of the internet. It's probably about 20 years old, this video. Um, and the the anchor is, you know, like not buying it, right? I mean, you know, it's like the things that Bill Gates imagined we would be doing 20, 25 years ago in the 90s, basically in the 90s and the early 2000s, what we'd be able to do with the internet, um, you know, uh, have have all come true, right? I mean, at least most of them have come true. Um, and so, you know, metaverse is kind of the next iteration of, of the internet. Um, and um, the way that I describe uh, metaverse is that it is a shared virtual experience so um and i, I th those words um that i just used were very carefully chosen uh i usually don't parse my words very carefully but i did in that particular sentence because it is a shared and so it's with other people uh, and experience is we're doing things, um, we're doing things together, right? So this idea, you know, uh, that perhaps uh, a few years from now, um, instead of going to a concert at a concert venue, you might be attending a concert on the metaverse. So, you know, it might look like it sort of more like 3D-ish, right? So there might be, you know, there there might be a virtual concert, uh, there might be a virtual concert venue, and you with your friends and with everybody else um, attends that concert online, you know, online virtually, uh, in a in a three D space. So to drive this point home, I have some examples of some of the things that people have done on the metaverse. Uh, in the last in the last few months, um, a company purchased uh, some land for four point three million dollars. Uh, Snoop Dogg bought a house on the metaverse, and uh, somebody bought somebody became his neighbor for four hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars, and somebody bought a virtual yacht for six hundred thirty thousand dollars. So you know, uh, shared experiences, <laughs> shared virtual experiences. Like, I can't hold these things, right? Like, I feel like I'm, I'm like my dad right now, <laughs> who's like a very practical investor. He likes land, real estate. He's a manufacturer by trade. So like, I can't hold this land. I can't touch in this reality, the land, or like, I can't walk into Snoop Dogg's house, like in this existing world right now, this is on the metaverse. It's a, it's a digital thing. 3D virtual iteration of these things? Right, absolutely. Yeah. So so you can't hold these things, but you know, you you in, in the same way that you might be able to go to the mall, uh, to your local in real life mall, um, you might be able to buy a land, you know, a land of the metaverse, build a mall lease that space out to other retailers and art galleries and you might actually you might actually you might actually have some customers that might go and shop at your mall or at the stores that are in your mall uh and but so even though the the existence might not might not be touchable actually it, it might be touchable if you put on some vr goggles in some cases you know you might actually be able to experience those things but the one thing that that could, that is very much real is the financial component of it. So, you know, like someone actually did spend four hundred thirty thousand dollars of real cash, and and buying 
the house next to Snoop Dogg's, right? That that was real money. And so uh, most of the transactions that are happening in the metaverse are operating on some kind of a crypto or digital coin-based currency, but you can withdraw that money and convert it into real hard cash um, if, as you you were, so, if you so choose to. You, you answered on my next question was I was saying, are people using Bitcoin to buy this stuff? So you, you answered, um, you were like one step ahead of me there. Um, and I, I, when you were talking about Bill Gates and his sort of vision of what the internet could become, um, the, I read that the term metaverse was actually coined 30 years ago um, by a sci-fi author, um, Neil Stevenson. And I, I think it's sort of like, if I'm trying to keep up here, you know, 30 years ago, like you, you can't hold the cloud, right? Like you can't hold cloud computing, but it has value. Um, and it's important to the functioning of our society and of economies. And I'm trying to get myself to realize that just because I can't physically touch the house doesn't mean it doesn't have value. And you're telling me that the the real component here, like there are financial transactions and there is, there's money involved in this and to be had by the metaverse. Yeah, I mean, just in the same way about 30 years ago, when, I mean, I don't know about you, Emily, but for 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 me, I I don't ever have any cash in my pocket, right? Because I don't ever need cash. No. Um, you know, so when I go and buy gas for my car, uh, if there's if there's no Apple Pay, I usually have a debit card or a credit card that I pay with. Um, if I if I need an Uber, that's all linked to Apple Pay. I you know I have an iPhone, so it all you know all those transactions. Are now happening are now happening seamlessly, right? And so you know we there there was a time when we would order you know when if we, if we needed to go from place A to place B and didn't want to drive our own cars, we would call a company. The, the, you know there would be a cab driver that would show up, usually a half hour late, you know so on and so forth. And so you know technology has has become such a part, such an important part, significant part of our lives. Um, and a lot of the things that we never imagined we would do using our phones and technology, um, we are now doing. And even sort of as we're recording this podcast, right? I mean, you and I are on camera, we're looking at each other's faces, you know, and we're, we're having this conversation about the metaverse. You know, previously, if you wanted to record, you know, I'd have to coordinate a time with you. You would either have to come to where I was or we'd have to meet somewhere in the middle. You know, there'd be a lot of equipment involved. Now, sort of, you know, I'm not sure what equipment you're using, but I'm using an iPad and I have my iPhone next to me. I have my AirPods, you know, there's no fancy equipment here. Um, you know, it's all so... You know, previously would have to buy an expensive camera, maybe a tripod. So, so so much of our of our of our daily routine has has become uh, has has become um, uh, so tech focused uh, that we didn't even imagine thirty years ago. And so, in looking ahead, not even thirty years, but looking ahead even five or ten years from now, just thinking about the future and how. Uh, something like and how something like the metaverse is going to be able to shape our experiences uh, is is just going to be incredibly fascinating you know and one use case that i'm that i'm particularly fascinated about is 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 with regards to education right i mean when when covid-19 hit uh full disclosure i don't have any kids but I know plenty of people who do. And every day that I talk to them and every week that I talk to them, they had the same complaint, you know, and it was like, well, kids aren't going to school. Zoom is so hard. Kids are not focused. They're not getting the classroom environment. Now, just imagine uh, mimicking an actual classroom on, on the metaverse. So you maybe perhaps you have some VR goggles, you have an avatar, 
the 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 environment the environment surrounding you uh, becomes very three D ish, uh, and you can envision yourself being in a classroom, and there is an instructor who's actually teaching you those things. And yes, nothing is ever going to replace the in person learning environment that you might get from going into a school building. Um, nothing will ever replace that, but at least this can come close to it. You know, one of the things that uh, even organizations have uh, have had a struggle with is how do we replace these water how do we replace these water cooler moments that happen in an office environment? Well, you know, um, if you have uh, if you have significant remote staff, um, either because of COVID nineteen or even prior to COVID nineteen, and you had struggled with sort of this team building, um, maybe maybe if you're trying to do a meeting. Rather than doing that meeting over Zoom, you might be able to do that meeting on the metaverse and 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 mimic a conference room or a meeting space where people can exchange ideas and have a, and have and have conversations and mimic those water cooler type of moments. So the the the, the use cases for this uh, are basically endless. And sort of in my view, um, there's not going to be a sector of our economy that is not going to be touched by the metaverse. 10 years from now. Right now, there's probably only about 2% of our digital space um, that is um, that uses sort of real 3D imaging. And I think in the next 10 years, that number will grow significantly. I mean, I'm not sure how, how much, but if I had to put a number on it today, I'd probably say somewhere 25 to 30% um, that these, these experiences will become uh, Sort of more, uh, more and more common uh, as 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 time goes on. You bring up something that.